Hi, I'm Natasha. In this video, I'll show you how I made this easy to build remote control talking skull using microbit and crazy circuits. The idea for this project is that the trick-or-treaters will think this is just a normal off-the-shelf animatronic skull, but we'll totally catch them off guard when the skull starts to say things that are a little too on the nose to be pre-recorded. I'll show you how I built it, and at the end, you can see how it made the perfect scare. Now, when I was shopping for a skull for this project, I wanted to find something that you could remove the top of the head so I could put the circuits inside. I was lucky enough to find this skull where the top of the head comes apart, so I already had a project enclosure that was easy to access for building and troubleshooting. But full disclosure, it is totally creepy to have an anatomical model of a skull lying around if you're not used to it. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> okay. To make the jaw move, I first tried to make the motor move the jaw on a string through a hole in the top of the mouth. And that didn't work because the motor wasn't strong enough to lift the whole weight of the jaw against gravity. But this skull came with a spring holding the jaw up. So instead of having the motor pull up, I used the spring to keep the jaw closed and used the motor to pull the jaw open. So in this system, the spring does the work against gravity, and all the motor has to do is pull against the spring's tension a bit. To put it together, I put two holes in the skull and used zip ties to secure the motor. I used a Lego piece to redirect the motor's motion and connected the end to the jaw with a piece of fish line. The jaw was held together by tension between the spring and these silicone cushions and it could fall out of alignment when pulled backwards. So I put a hole in each side and thread a zip tie through to secure it to the main part of the skull. To add some personality to the eyes, I connected 10 millimeter LEDs to jumper wires and thread them through each eye. Then I placed the bit board inside the skull and connected it using, wait for it, the same zip ties that I used for the jaw. The end of the zip tie was large enough to hold the board in place through the hole. I love that these holes on the bit board can be used for electrical or physical connections. Then I plugged the LED wires into pins 15 and 16 and the motor into pin 13. And I was ready to code. The goal is to make it so that the prankster has a micro bit that is listening to the volume of their voice and sending that data to the micro bit inside the skull, which will move the jaw and light the eyes accordingly. The prankster micro bit listens to the volume using the onboard microphone and sends that number to the other micro bit. Simple. The skull micro bit takes that value and moves the jaw open when it's particularly loud and closed when it's particularly quiet. And the eyes follow the same logic but with more sensitivity, so they turn on when there's almost any sound and turn off when there's quiet. Get it back here. I saw you take two. I saw you take two. <laughs> to finish off the project, I attached the skull to a pole using zip ties, then I placed it inside the cauldron using some fixtures from the hardware store and more zip ties. I added a sign and a platform to put candy on. Then I set everything up outside, ready for trick-or-treaters, and gave her a very nice wig. A phone call between the cauldron and the prankster will let them hear and interact with the trick-or-treaters and play the skull from afar. Okay, let's see it in action. What, do you want some candy? How's candy made? Out of, out of the fingers of little boys. Use your skull for good or evil. Either way, happy haunting!